Okay, disclaimer right now. This is a boring video. So the Camaro is still not tuned, but it does have working air conditioning again. I just finished wiring up the existing air conditioning to the new Holly system. You guys remember when I had the LS1 PCM, I kind of had it wired in with a uh, three wire switch, like a factory LS1 kind of thing. I made a video on that, link at the top of the screen, in case you're not running a Holly system. But right now I'm pretty much gonna run through all the steps that I did, show you my wiring diagram. So if you have one of these and you want the air conditioning going with the Holly system, you'll be able to get it working. All right, so here's the diagram that I came up with. I made one revision to this um, because initially I had the high and low pressure switch wired into the power um, going to the compressor instead of the signal wire into the Holly. I'm going to explain what all this does, but I have this posted up on thirdgen.org if you want to get a closer look at it. Um, there's kind of like a little thread going on there regarding getting the AC working with like one of these swaps. So for anybody who saw my other video where I got the AC hooked up with the L6 Concepts accessory drive and the LS1 stock PCM, I pretty much threw all that out the window. The existing wiring for the three wire pressure switch, all that's gone. This is completely fresh basically. So first of all, to get the AC going, we have the 12 volt signal coming from the third gen AC controls. Basically you pull this controller out, there's gonna be a green wire back there. So when the controller is in AC mode or defrost, so basically the Holly uses three wires here, at least in my setup, there's multiple ways to do this. This is the way that worked for me. I'm really not um, familiar with the Holly software yet. Apparently you can program the inputs and outputs. So this directly will control the compressor. So you don't even need a shutdown relay but the Holly does have a shutdown wire, so I just decided to you know, wire it this way. So anyway, the Holly has three wires here. We have a 12 volt input signal. This is what's actually gonna tell the Holly, okay, I want air conditioning, and it's going to bump the idle up, turn on the fans. Then we have two outputs I'm using. One is the shutdown um, wire for the shutdown relay. That cuts the compressor off at higher RPM. And the second is a fan wire that I'm using as a ground. I'll explain that in a bit. But over here we have the Camaro side. This is just a 12 volt key on ignition source. All three of these wires actually to kind of connect these because these are all coming from the same source. All three of these wires are coming from one 12 volt key on ignition source from the Camaro's dash harness. I'm actually using one of the old um, power wires that went to the original carbureted like PCM. I'll show you this stuff up close in the car, but we have a single 12 volt source powering these three wires here. Back to the AC controls. We're gonna turn the AC control on. That green wire is gonna get 12 volts. Before it actually gets to the Holly and tells it to turn the AC on, we gotta pass through the two pressure switches. So I'm using the existing third gen low pressure switch here, that kind of round switch that's on the uh, receiver driver accumulator, whatever it is. And I just ran that in line. This is normally closed. So as long as the pressure is fine and it's not too low, this signal is gonna run through here all the time. Right after that, I have it in series wired to the high pressure switch. Now I didn't wire this in yet. I just have the low one hooked up. All I have to do is add one of these in line. I'm gonna get like a two wire uh, universal switch, just screw it onto the high pressure side and I'm gonna run it in series to this. I just gotta tap it in. So right now I'm just personally running the low pressure switch, which is gonna cycle the compressor when the pressure drops. But same thing, this is normally closed. So turn the AC on, we're gonna be able to go right through this, assuming the pressure is all right, and it's gonna to go to the Holly and give it the 12 volt signal. And then the Holly is gonna see that and bump the idle up. So the two outputs here I'm using are ground. To actually trigger the compressor, I'm using the fan two output. Now this has a fan, the Holly has a fan one and two uh, ground output. You can kind of wire them however you want. I think they have like high and low speeds and stuff. Both of my cooling fans are wired to two separate relays, but both relays are grounded by one, by the fan one output. So I wasn't using fan two. And the way the Holly set up, I wasn't able to, like I said, really learn the software yet. So I don't know how 
to program my own outputs and assign, you know, grounds to certain things. It's not a 12 volt, you know, outputs to certain things. So uh, I just used what was already there, already programmed in the software. And I took that fan to output, which is a ground. And I set the temp 300 degrees. That's the max fan temp. So 300 degrees, that fan would come on if it was programmed to that. So all this is doing, obviously when the AC comes on, it's gonna turn the fans on automatically. Being there's no fan on fan two, that's just a ground. So that's gonna ground the compressor relay and turn the compressor on. I set it up to 300 degrees because obviously, unless there's a major catastrophic problem, the car isn't gonna get that hot. So we don't have to worry about the fan coming on or the AC coming on whenever the fan would hit that temperature. So if this was set to like 190, I think where my fan one is, the compressor would kick on whenever the car hit 190 and you don't want that. The third wire here is the shutdown relay. So this is gonna shut the um, compressor off if you go over a certain amount of throttle, I think it's like 50%, it's automatically set to. And um, to prevent damage to the compressor, obviously it's gonna rob power if you're running with the AC on, it turns it off. So this middle terminal is 87A. 87 is the main output, that's always open. So when the relay's triggered, it closes and power goes out to 87. 87A is opposite, this is always closed. So the, regardless if this relay is getting power, there's always a connection between 30 and 87A here. So what this does, it supplies us with 12 volts ignition through this relay constantly. So as long as this isn't getting grounded, there's always power flowing here. 86 is the power side for that trigger, which I just tapped into the same 12 volt source. So these two always have power, but the relay isn't gonna, isn't gonna actually be triggered and open this connection unless this is grounded. So we always have power going through there and supplying power to our compressor relay. So basically you turn the AC on, it's gonna you know, ground the fan wire, obviously, like I just said, turn the compressor on and everything's gonna work as it should unless we give it enough gas where we go over 50% throttle, then the Holly is gonna ground this uh, shutdown wire, open this relay and that's gonna cut the power going to the compressor relay. A little bit complicated as far as how you can actually do it in the Holly software. One thing to keep in mind though, the outputs on the Holly have a max amp rating of only two. So you would think you could go into the software, change it to like a 12 volt output, which I don't know how to do yet, and just run that directly to your compressor and turn it on. You don't wanna do that because depending on what kind of compressor you have, I think the sand and I have in here, the voltage spike on startup could be as high as like three or four amps. So I definitely recommend just using that to control a relay and the relay will take you know, the brunt of whatever the, the spike of the amperage is when you turn it on. So that's basically all there is to it. Three wires, as far as the pressure switches go, don't be confused by them. They're just mechanical switches. Like I said, as long as the pressure's within range, these are always closed. The only time they're gonna open is if uh, you know there's a cooling problem, the fans don't turn on or something, or there's an obstruction and the high side goes like over 400 PSI or something, it's gonna sense you know the pressure, it's just a mechanical valve and it's gonna open. And when that opens, it's gonna cut the 12 volt request signal and turn the AC off. Same thing goes with the low pressure switch. Now, like I said, I had this wired differently before, before I had these switches in this line. So basically that's gonna cycle the compressor with pressure changes but the Holly's not gonna know about it. So the kick up is always gonna be um, on and you're gonna have like RPM fluctuations, stuff like that. If the compressor just turns itself on and off without the Holly knowing what the hell's going on. So now let's go over to the car. I'm gonna show you exactly um, what I tapped into for my 12 volt ignition. All right, so first of all, this is the Holly input and output harness. It contains four wires, I'm sorry, it contains eight wires. Four of those are inputs, four of those are outputs. For the relays, here are my two um, just kind of weather packed universal relays I got off Amazon. One is the shutdown, one is the compressor. This wire here is tapped into the green one behind the AC controls. So you turn the AC on, that gets 12 volts. It goes first before it gets to here, it goes into the engine bay. Actually, I'll show you right now. It 
goes into the engine bay, it goes to one side of the third gen pressure switch. Remember, this is closed all the time. There's always a connection here unless the pressure gets too low. It comes out and I have it going back into the car and into the holly. What I wanna do, because I couldn't figure out how to wire the factory three wire switch, I'm gonna get a two, uh, I'm gonna get a two wire pressure switch. Just cut one of these wires and just run it down to that switch run the second wire out and then reconnect it to this side and that's gonna be wired exactly how this is and they're both gonna be in series before they actually get to the holly so after uh coming out of the controls going to the switch they come it comes back in the car and then it connects to the holly through this blue this white uh blue stripe wire and when you turn the ac on like i said that's gonna actually tell to turn it on and give us output so that's the way I did it. As I said, you could probably do it easier if you just program um, the Holly to have a specific compressor output, and then it'll just do what it needs to do, cut it. You won't need a cut down relay. You'll just need one for the compressor. But if you do follow this diagram, you will get it working like this. And as for that trigger wire, uh, the 12 volt ignition on source, this is the old PCM connector for the old third gen computer. This is actually, I believe this connector just sits up in the dash and then this end had the actual PCM connectors on it because the PCM was mounted over here. So all I did was probe these until I got the one wire that had key on ignition voltage and it's a relatively thick wire. It might be that orange one at the bottom there. Just go in there, probe it, make sure it has a key on voltage and when the engine's running. And uh, yeah, I just used that to kind of supply power to all this and I got my AC working. This has to kind of stay a mess for now because I have to run the wire for the pulse width uh, to one of the injectors. This is for my new meth controller. I'm not using boost reference anymore. So I got to figure out which uh, one of those wires in the Holly loom I need to tap into before it actually gets tuned. But we turn the ignition on here. Fans come on. You can hear the compressor click. And everything works as it's supposed to.